Hello guys, this is Rama. I just want to let you know that I've uploaded another video and I love you guys to go and watch it. And if you like it, uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and uh, press the notification button. In that way, you don't miss any of our content every time we upload it. I hope you enjoy the video. Baboons and monkeys. The Hadza people hunt baboons and monkeys for their meat, which is considered delicious. Birds. The Hadza hunt birds such as guinea fowl, francolin, and doves using trapping nets. That's it. That is the youngest. It's a little one. Bora. Bush baby. Porcupines. These animals are hunted for their meat and quills, which are used in traditional cut. It is worth noting that the Hadza people's hunting practices are sustainable and respectful of the environment, and they only hunt what is necessary for their substance. They also have a deep knowledge of the wildlife in their area and their ecological system. They are part of it and they have developed a close relationship with the land they live on. <laughs> the Hadza people have a deep knowledge of their local environment and the resources available to them. This is how hydro drinking water actually when they find some water somewhere. You don't need cup. Don't need nothing. Make life they are skilled at finding water source while hunting, as water is essential for their survival in the hot 
and RD Savannas where they live. No, no, I'm not sure if I can drink it out. I'm very yeah. thirsty, but I don't think if my stomach you can sustain this kind of water. You know, I know that I, I grew up uh, around Arusha, around this area. I could pretty much say that, but I'm not sure if I can drink this because uh, this is not me. This is not how I... The Hadza people typically find water in a variety of ways, depending on the season and the location of their hunting ground. Some of the methods they use includes digging for water. They have to dig shallow holes and dry riverbeds, or areas where water may be present underground. They then wait for the water to seep into the hole, and they collect it in container or by using animal skin. like what we have together with the bell of fruits that still make it as a cup so they can have it later <laughs> collecting rainwater during the rain season the Hadza collect rainwater in a large container or by digging shallow pits in the ground Drinking from natural springs. The Hadza know the location of natural springs in their area and they often visit the spring to drink and collect the water. See, the kid is climbing up to get to the top of these baobab trees. The trees are holding water. There's a big hole. Obtaining water from plants. The Hadza obtain water from certain plants such as baobab trees, whose trunk can hold a large amount of water during the dry season. Drinking water. This is very interesting so that uh, they know exactly where to, to find the water. And that will be super clean water. Overall, the Hadza people's hunting and gathering practice are deeply connected to their knowledge of the local environment and the ability to find and utilize the resources available to them. They just disappear.
Baba <laughs> Okay, <laughs> man, <laughs> 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 Which is <laughs> Ah, <laughs>
Ha <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
ペネンテ、ナチャチャソン。あ、こてかてかじゃちゃん。あ、こわまみて。なんまなくやまみてちゃ。なんまなく。おのちゃちゃせめかかいとぴ。こわいちゃせめ。たかのこ。ザタシテアメアメザネエペキエハエウォコパナクアパナキトアパナキトアパナキトアパナキトアパナキトアパナキトアパナキトアパナキトアパナキトアパナキトアパナキトアパナキトアパナキトアパナキトアパナキトアパ
Kaj ti na otamana? Kaže me to kad kuti ja mana? E. Ha? Tu mi tu ga makan. La mi. Ani ko ani ma ko ka ani. Ne preja ani ni to ma pat. Ye. Katana ko. Ne katana ko. Hi. Hey. Oh, 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 Ah. Ah. Okay, to ask our same inku. Ask us some other poko poko. Di no kwata tro o ta pu. Tete na. Ta ki ami jo be na pu. Eko. E la ka na sti wa ta ta to mako. Goda, how much are you charging me? Goda. Tapi gua tinggi jambat di jambat dia ya apa? Benar. Sit sit sit. Benar ia sama pol. Alah kasa tu aku nak gua. Kasi aku benar aku pun aku mesti ye. Aku mesti ye. Ah? Benar ni jambat dia benar. Kau pergi tonton abonya. 
ili kikeba letan chetabo sondunya baminak acho wa chebisi a obera akote fa dika eba Ini tablet pembayaran anak anak kita cak. Siapa nama nama cina? Kamu dah disuka nak cakap polis nak mak ni bernafas. Bernafas tak buku abad dah. Ibu tanya. Jatuh mika zaman nama nabi si kawan kawan. Okay, show. Ini dia. Cakap orang pandai. Asal aku tu orang ngaji. Ini saya luaran apa kak? Ani, ani umbu. Pada luar kak. Aku pita apa? Alai, cici. Ikam dua, calem dua. Tuan ada kulai. Cukup lah. Siapa nak orang kumpulan sebelah si? Kau nak tu mian, wangga ya, mota kamera ini. Hani, asali. Bebe bawa. Himiva. Kuwa shida. Here we go. We go for the honey now. We just found some honey, so let's see. I think there is some honey in here. Wow, a lot. Aye, ah, then it's a lot. Do you know how much I like Cuba? Do you know how much I like Cuba? I can't eat a lot. I can't eat. Afi, bena Afi. Cuma nak. Ah, ada esok ulam. Aw. Oh, cantiknya. Kau yang sokong dia. Ibu nak kaya tak itu tiku kau mak. Baalah ni. Baalah. Hah? Baalah. Kau kena jaya ni. Pepe pepe eh 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 eh. Ini nak ngumpul. Eh, ah, terus yang itu lah. Ah, ah, terus nak kain amir sini. Ada nak kah tak? Kau yang kau mampu. Kau pasti yang nak kah nama balai. Ah, kau tu cik aku, kau cik aku yang cik aku. Lu kau yang nak kah nama icha. Wapi i, uh, kau tu, uh, kau tu, kau tu, eh, macam mana? Aje, betul tak? Eh, ah, sangat ulam. Ayah, sama umur bermiah itu, ya aku ada tak? Yes, yes, yes.
just found some breakfast. Quack, <laughs> 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 Mais, mais, mais. Eh? Mais, mais. Tu me Mais je suis là. Ah, mana. Ah, mana. Eh. Ah, mana. What does that mean? that. I try to tell him that so we just move and say that no. We eat first. Yes, we must eat here. Let's eat first. It's always, it is always, it is always amazing that they don't get thing by the bees. Yes. Like this ticket their whole hand and inside the beehives but they never get this thing. Just <laughs> 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 Just <laughs> I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> 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 I'm 
Let's finish making the fire and harvest the honey. And then we plan to track and hunt the troop of baboons that we saw earlier near the bottom of the hill. We need to make sure that uh, we surround the baboon in a small area where it will be easy to ambush them and keep them away from the thick bushes where they could take cover and escape. I saw them by the hill behind us where it won't be easy to surround them. As long as we wait here, there is a good chance that the baboons will head downhill where it will be easier to surround and catch at least one today. The baboon usually sleep here, but now they have gone down this way and are over at the bottom of the hill over there. But the troop will likely return to sleep here later this evening. Let's wait a bit. Mm. 
Over there, we once ambushed them. The baboons have peculiar sound that they make when caught. Woo, 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 woo. Similar to barking dogs. We love it. We need to go. Very soon, we want to hear them barking like dogs. All right, for now, let's go have our breakfast first. On a day when game appears, cuts the Hazabi search for beehive to collect the honey. Honey is an important food source for the Hadza, making up 15 to 20 percent of their diet. Energy dense and sweet, the Hadza men and women both rank honey as one of their favorite foods. Hadzabi men usually hunt and forage individually and eat berries, fruits, and other food encountered throughout the day and bring home honey, wild game, and any other food so that they have managed to collect or hunt down that day.
Jangan <laughs> Tak 
Hmm? And everyone was like, everyone goes like, you could be lying. But I'm a girl, but I'm going to go out and kill you on my car. I must have a check at <laughs> they, they found some honey in another tree again, yeah, so now they're starting the fire, they're putting up the fire and uh, try to get some smoke out. That they can chase the bees away easily. This one seems a bit aggressive, so they have to start the fire and get the smoke out of there so they can chase the bees out. It is good for every day if they can find honey somewhere because honey gives them energy and the energy is what they need so they can walk many miles to find something that they really want to. Earlier today they suspected there will be some baboons somewhere so they're taking their time uh, waiting for baboon to move to somewhere else and then they're gonna try to track them.
A young boy has the hunters carrying a white tail mongoose back home. A new face of a young hero in the Hadza community. The young boys in the Hadza community do indeed participating in hunting and it is a significant part of the traditional way of life and culture. Hadza boys usually start joining hunting activities at an early age, typically around the early teens. They learn essential skills and knowledge from experienced hunters in the community, such as tracking techniques, using bows and arrows, and understanding the behavior of animals they hunt. Hunting is considered a rite passage for the Hadza boys and it plays a crucial role in their cultural identity and survival strategies. They're in the middle of chasing the bird. They try to hit it, so look. During the hunting, young Hadza boys may encounter various difficulties while out hunting. Hunting in the wild can be a challenging and dangerous activities, especially for those who are still learning the necessary skills and gaining experience. Once they got it, they got it. That's why I call it food for them. It's a little hunt. They got it and now this is the way they get it back home. Currently they have to like make it hanging so they can continue with the hunting until they find something bigger than that one. But currently this, this is how they're gonna take it back home. Some common difficulties young Hadza hunters might face include Lack of experience. Young boys lack the experience of seasonal hunters, which can make it harder for them to track and catch any more effectively. Physical challenges. Hunting involves long walks, running and physical exertion, which can be demanding for young hunters, especially in the harsh terrain and extremely weather conditions. Limited equipment. Hadza hunter traditionally use simple tools like bow and arrow, which require skills and accuracy to use effectively. Young boys may need time to hone their archery skills. Danger for wild animals. While hunting, there is always a risk of encountering dangerous wild animals that could pose a threat to the hunter's safety. Uncertain outcome. Hunting success is never guaranteed. Young hunters may face disappointments if they return empty-handed after spending significant time and effort on a hunt. Cultural expectation. As hunting is a crucial aspect of Hadza culture, there may be cultural expectation for young boys to perform well in these activities, adding additional pressure.
Wow! That was a white-tailed mongoose. They were about to catch it. They found an alligator, the white-tailed mongoose. So this little we are about to be heading back home and accidentally because I saw we spread it all around the area. So they finally got to get this one. They saw it and they finally went for it. So now all what they do is they are going back to the same place where they found this one. They usually live in a pair, hoping that they can find another one. Okay. Here's a place where they found it, it jumped out. So now they are keen to see if they can find another one. Despite these challenges, the Hadza community relies on the knowledge and skill passed down through the generation to ensure that young boys gradually develop into capable hunters and contribute to the survival of the groups. Through practice, guidance, and experience, Young Hadza hunters learn to navigate these difficulties and become more proficient in the hunting endeavors over time. When they successful catch an animal during a hunting expedition, they play an essential role in transporting the game back to the camp or settlement. <laughs> In the Hadza community, young boys who participating in the hunting are expected to contribute to the group's food supply by carrying their hunt back home. While young boys may not be able to carry as much weight as adult hunters, they still play a part in transporting the hunted game back to the camp. The division of labor within the community helps to ensure that uh, the food is shared equitably and that everyone has benefited from successful hunting efforts. <laughs> The distance that young boys can go hunting for varies depending on factors such as their age, physical capabilities, and the hunting practice of their specific community. Generally, young boys make accompany adult hunters on short hunting trips close to the camp or settlement. A 
Over time, as the boys grow and gain strength and experience, they become more capable of carrying a larger portion of the hunt back home. Since the young boys are still learning the skills of hunting and may not have the stamina of experienced hunters, they may not venture as far from the camp as the adult do. They might participate in short hunting expedition in the surrounding areas, gradually increasing the distance they cover as they gain more experience and confidence. The Hadza people practice a system of communal sharing where the fruits of a successful hunt are disputed among the entire group. After a hunt, the meat from the caught animal is divided and shared with the members of the community, ensuring that everyone gets a fair share of the food. The Hadza people are nomadic hunter-gatherers, so their camp or settlement are not permanent. They move regularly to follow seasonal food source and game animals, depending on the availability of resources and the movement of their community. The distance covered during the hunting trip can vary significantly. Oh, 
Hadza and San people, also known as the Bushmen, are two distinct groups of indigenous hunter-gatherer peoples who live in a different region of Africa. While they share some similarities in their lifestyles and cultural practice, they are not directly related to each other. The San people are indigenous to the Kalahari Desert region of Southern Africa. Spanning across Botswana, Namibia and South Africa. Like the Hadza, they are known for their traditional hunter-gatherer lifestyle, although some Sun groups have also practiced pastoralism and agriculture in recent centuries. 
like it must be white like that. Oh. All of it and then you can chew. I just chew on The San people have a unique language called Kung, which is characterized by click sounds. Both Hadza and San people have adapted to the harsh environments and develop intricate knowledge of the plants and animals in their surroundings. Okay, I didn't talk in between. I saw I'm filming, yes. so I hope I remember everything. <laughs> so, um, he says at night. They use their knowledge of the environment to gather wild plants, fruits, and tubers, and hunt game animals. Both groups also have a deep spiritual connection to their land and the natural world and often perform ritual and ceremonies to honor their ancestors and the spirit of the land. In terms of survival, both Hadza and San people face challenges to their traditional way of life. Their land and resources have been encroached upon by modern development and they have faced persecution and marginalization from colonial powers and dominant societies. However, both groups have also been able to adapt and continue their way of life in the face of these challenges and many have formed partnership with outside organizations and researchers to preserve their culture and environment. This is a wild bush pig with footprints. I think they just detected them in here, as you can see. So now they're tracking us. Apparently, they must have been heading this way, if you can see that on the ground, but uh, then now, and this way too. So we're gonna face it this way, let's just go. Wow, look at this. I think the bush pig was eating something here. It's just now. And the foot, this is a foot of it.
mobile lifestyle. The Hadzabi are mobile people and they don't have permanent settlement. Instead, they move around the territory in search of food and water. <laughs> They're blaming on one another. The one who's as you see. But he's you know it could be a chance for him when you was too close. They build temporary shelters made of sticks and grass when they need to rest or escape bad weather. In division of labor, men typically do the hunting and women do most of their gathering. However, there is some overlap in roles. And both men and women are involved in child rearing. Men are mainly just focusing on hunting and women are mainly focusing on uh, building the houses, going out for digging out for bulbs, tubers and all those kind of stuff. So at least they have job petitions. So, they... so the bulb looks like it's quite easy to peel off. As you can see they just uh, use their hands to like peel it off. Wow. So they don't really have to cook it actually, they just eat it raw the way it is. Damu. <laughs> So they just shared with their little one and this is actually really good it looks like. Social structure. The Hadzabi live in a small flexible group of around 20 to 30 people. They don't have formal leadership structure or social hierarchy, but there is some degrees of respect for elders and those who are skilled in hunting and gathering. There is a lot of uh, dicky dick footy print on the ground, in the ground. So, everyone, everyone have got. Oh, honey, Asali. Very good. We just found honey. Himiva, Bawa. Takuja Badai. So they just, uh, they just found a way some honey will be. The honey, this is like a beehive that they actually protected from the before by putting the stone on it. I think now they are in a, on a hunting session, so probably coming back later on to have some honey. So let's see. 
they saw something. I think they see something. What is it? Oh, they got it. Look, look, the dog is taking it. The dog is taking it. It's gone. The dog just took it. It's gone. It's gone. Look at his expression. No, it's okay. Here we go, we go for the honey now. They just found some honey, so let's see. I think there is some honey in here. Wow, a lot. I don't know to I'm <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Eh, <laughs> Just found some breakfast. Cook, <laughs> 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 Mais, mais, mais. Eh? Mais, mais. Tu me Mais je suis là. Ah, mana. Ah, mana. Eh. Ah, ah. ah. ah mana. What does that mean? <laughs> I, I try to tell him that so we just move and say that no. Ah. We, we, we eat have, first. Yes. We, we must eat here. <laughs> Let's eat first. In front of it's the always, bees. It is always. It is always. It is always amazing <laughs> that uh, <laughs> they don't get sting by the bees. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like they stick it in their whole hand and inside the beehives, but they never get a sting.
The Hadza have their own unique language, which is a click language similar to other languages spoken in South Africa. However, many Hadza are also fluent in Swahili, the lingua franca of Tanzania. Relationship with neighboring tribes. The Hadza have historically had peaceful relationship with neighboring tribes, such as the pastoralist the Togger and the agriculturist Iraq. However, in recent years, their territory has come under pressure from outside forces, such as wildlife conservation efforts and large-scale agriculture. I think so, yeah. You think so? Yeah. Currently, the Hadza lead a unique and fascinating lifestyle that has remained largely unchanged for thousands of years. So this is where they're digging down for bulbs of oh, some sort of wild potatoes as well and taking back I'm all of the food what, what, take it back what, and cook it and yeah, it looks yeah, so what, what it looks like is ground potatoes just okay, like this so this is where they're digging out in the ground so they will use a long stick with a sharp end to dig down which makes it easier to dig out to the ground And to get bows out of there. So they usually just go around with their kids. They don't actually leave their kids behind because there's no one else to look after the kids. So once all the women 
Okay. Go out in the bush, then they come along with their kids. The men usually go out hunting and the women will come out digging out for the bulb, the way you see it right now. And it's been bad that it can cook for the entire family. The hole sometimes can be quick, can be really deep, sometimes it's a bit shallow. It really depends to an area where they try to dig out the bulbs or the underground potatoes. Today, the distance and duration of Hadza hunting trip can vary depending on factors such as the availability of game and the season. However, typically, a Hadza hunting trip can last anywhere from a few hours to a full day, covering a distance of several kilometers. The Hadza use a combination of stalking, striking, and ambush techniques to hunt game animals such as baboon, bushback, and warthogs. They may also use baited traps or torches to stun animals at night. Hunting is an essential part of the Hadza's way of life, and they typically hunt several times a week to supplement their diet of gathering food. However, the Hadza do not hunt excessively, and they have a deep respect for the animals they hunt, believing that uh, they must show gratitude and respect for the animal spirits after killing. It is important to note that uh, the Hadza's hunting practice are sustainable and have been honed over thousands of years to ensure the survival of both the animals and the hunters themselves. The San people like Hadza and other indigenous hunter-gatherer groups have a flexible lifestyle and do not have a fixed daily routine. Length and distance of their hunting trips can vary depending on factors such as weather condition, availability of game animals and other factors. 
We don't teach our children anything. We tell it in a story or we do it in an acting scene. So I'm going to teach you now today exactly like I teach my children. We'll look at a, if we want to kill an animal, we look at a pathway and then we'll put. In general, sun hunting trips can range from a few hours to several days or even weeks depending on the availability of food and resources. During these trips, sun hunters may travel distance of several kilometers per day, often tracking animals over long distance in search of food. The sun are skilled at using a range of hunting techniques, including stalking, trapping, and the use of bows and arrows. They also have intimate knowledge of the plants and animals in the environment and they may rely on the understanding of animal behavior and habitat to locate and catch their prey. Maybe you can come back to that one, and Rama, you are going to do that one. <laughs> it's so good that you, that you want to be sick. You're a tough cookie. Do I mind? Kaba. Okay, listen, guys, this is interesting. He says, they, no, he doesn't say that. I first want to say, then I'll tell you what he says. There's a, there's a plant called a cambrua. 
So it's make a long seed pot and it dries and it bursts open and wherever the wind takes it, where it falls, it grows. So it's coincidence that it's in this bush. So they brought us today um, to a bushy area. It is important to note that uh, the sun, like Hadzabe and other indigenous hunter-gatherer groups, have a deep connection to the environment and rely on a complex set of skills and knowledge to survive. Inside this bush, it's not part of the bush, these things are. It's just this grey little thing and it creeps up here. You see it creeps there. Creep, creep, creep and here it grows. So the seed has fallen there. And then with rain it has grown and it's creep. It looks grey and grey. How do you pick it up? It's incredible. It's because their concentration on the soil is so um, unique. You know, they, they know if there's something different. So this thing, this Cambrua, can grow up to two meters deep. So we're not going to stand here 30 minutes and, and look at the, the ladies dig, but they will dig it. And while they dig it, the men will make fire there for us and explain other stuff and you can walk between the two and then you don't have to stay here the whole time watching them dig so now they just want to start with the fire they're out here collecting some dry uh, grasses and let's see what the bushmen gonna do how do they start the fire if it's just exactly the same like Hadzabi because this is quite a uh, related uh, culture with Hadzabi and they're quite close from each other and the, what the way of doing life is quite similar so this is very interesting let's see what it's going to be like and if a little coal fall into the grass and smoke comes from the grass then they can make in if you're interested in having a look but apart from that if you manage to keep the egg hole you'll put it at the ant's nest and the ants will go in and clean it very nicely for you then you go to the water holes, you submerge the egg under the water hole to fill it with water because, and then you store it all over your hunting and food gathering area. He said to put sticks like that around the egg is extremely important. If you don't put sticks like that, the brown ahina and jackal will smell the water and steal it. But if you put sticks, they think it's a trap and they normally lose, leave your egg alone. Mm. Their lifestyle is shaped by the environment and the resources available to them.
Happy, happy, happy. 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 Happy, happy, happ
Very tasty sweet drink. So that's a summer thing, but he said for winter you can dig the root. You can make scrapings, roast it, and you make a very... They call it coffee because it's brown, and they see that we drink coffee that is brown. So they say you can make coffee, but it's actually more... A, it tastes like an energy drink. It's brown, and you drink it hot, but it doesn't taste like a coffee. I think it's because of the color. Uh, do you know Milo? Mm -hmm. yeah? Or hot chocolate Milo is more that type of taste. You need a very delicate, nice, straight, strong digging stick to dig roots. Because if you dig with any big thing, you injure the root and sand will go in there. So she said her digging stick is made from the western riggers and bush. If she had a choice today, she would take that one. She will cut a piece once again, burn it in the fire. That always loosens the bark. Loosen the bark and she will sharpen one point. She will use that stick then for digging. And I said, why that specific one? And she said, if she use other branches, the stick breaks. They've just realized that this one is nice and strong and doesn't easily crack like other wood. <laughs> Now, so you're staying one day, maybe you can come back to that one, and Rama, you are going to do that one. <laughs> it's so good that you, that you want to be sick. You don't want to be sick. You're a tough cookie. Do I mind? Rama. Okay, listen guys, this is interesting. He says, they, no, he doesn't say that. I first want to say, then I'll tell you what he says. There's a, there's a plant called the Cambrua. So it's make a long seed pot and it dries and it bursts open and wherever the wind takes it, where it falls, it grows. So it's coincidence that it's in this bush. So they brought us today um, to a bushy area because then seeds hooks easily. So if on their own, if they want to uh, find se uh, seeds to eat, they'll go in an open area. If they want to dig roots, they'll come into a bushy area. So if you look inside this bush, it's not part of the bush, these things are. It's just this grey little thing and it creeps up here. You see it creeps there. Creep, creep, creep and here it grows. So the seed has fallen there and then with rain it has grown and it's creep. It looks grey and grey. How do you pick it up? It's incredible. It's because their concentration on the soil is so um, unique. You know, they, they know if there's something different. So this thing, this Cambrua can grow up to two meters deep. So we're not going to stand here 30 minutes and, and look at the, the ladies dig, but they will dig it. And while they dig it, the men will make fire there for us and explain other stuff and you can walk between the two. And then you don't have to stand here the whole time watching them dig. Oh, 
Anfang noch ein bisschen Glück an Uhr gemacht. Uhr. Ganz so This is the Hanega Garitama. This is the um, sandpaper raisin bush. If you feel the leaf, this one and that one, it will feel like sandpaper. He said it's one of the very tastiest berry bushes in summer. But what happens in winter is the frost is drying the berries. That's why you have to collect mostly in summer and store for winter. Look, I'll try my old sticks, but I just want to test my new sticks. So they put a little bit of sand in the hole. That helps with the friction and then they start drilling. And when smoke, as they drill, the inside of the stick fall into the grass. And if a little coal fall into the grass and smoke comes from the grass, then they can make fire. Okay, now it's also a skill. Now if you blow too hard, you kill it. So now you must blow softly and give it air and then... So the moment they see smoke coming from the grass, they stop. Because that means a little cola. If you see, he's picking up a little bit of down and throw it in there.
There's me. <laughs> now they they ha they gotta bring they've brought some nuts from their house that they stored from winter, but they don't use the hot fire. You know they heat up the sand and they they do the roasting in hot sand. Mm. Otherwise, it's too warm and it burns. That's similar to Malay. Yeah. Oh really? Mm. Yeah. Ayo is like um it's a different uh, context. We use it as Oh no. Oh, oh really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And how do you pronounce it when you say it? Ayo. Ayo. Yeah. Ayo. Yeah. Or Aya. Yeah. Ah. Ayo or Aya. Handi, handi, koi, koi. Ayo ba uti. Mar eji ko ayo mi, eji ko mi, ay ita hatamakuru. Asa ko mi ayo gare e. Handi, ita hatamakuru. Khadum ka nai ko adu sum ko kuru na. It's so different, huh? Yeah. It's like us and Dutch. The exact same words means totally different, yeah. different things. Yeah. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Right. That's right. Like, verskoon my asseblief top. That means, yeah. please excuse me. Yes. With them it means I'm going to undress. It's totally oh, different. It's so different, yeah. Right. I'm going to undress. Yeah. 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 I've not heard that for a long time. Okay. <laughs> My grandfather is from... He 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 is from... The wild coffee bean... We picked the pots from the wild coffee bean bush. Then we opened the pots like that and we cooked the inside, the seeds. We roast it. That is the one we brought for you. They are still on the trees, but they're all best open now. Mm. You'll see them. The tortoises have very tasty soft food. Mm. So the young people like to eat it, but the old people who don't have teeth, it's perfect for them because it doesn't require chewing. So if you find a tortoise, we put a stick through the head and it dies immediately. We take it to the house, then we cook it and eat it. And it's such handy, the shell. You can use it to, to drink water from a water hole. You can use it as a bucket or a plate. It's just very handy. You see the rope they have? They make it from the fibers of that little green plant that the boy is holding. Mm. So it depends what they want to kill. They. He says also that plant is not only for rope. If you've got an ear infection, you will heat it. When you eat it, it gets very juicy, and then you'll turn it like that, and you'll drip, you'll drip the liquid in your ear for an ear infection. The boy is eating it, but it's not a food. It's what children do. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. But it's not poisonous, so it's okay. Mm. It's, it's more like a popcorn. They roast it. And it's just the, the I. They are not saying coffee. I'm saying because it's the common name of the bush wild coffee bean. Bohemia professional. Hari banta wa miti kuru na funta wa mo. Kome. Wera tu dumska sa banta niya. 
She said she doesn't see the root yet. She just see the, the small part. Deep that thing. It's quite hard now. They still use it every day because the yeah. government gives yeah. them yeah. 600 kula, that is 60 dollars, yeah. so it's one time shopping. So they'll buy, buy, I see they always buy um, coffee, tea, sugar, yeah. and they will buy maize meal, yeah. and then they run out, and then they're back to the bush. Does it look like a rusted chestnut? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
The root of the plant is making it a little bit tough. It went under the root. Eh, wait there. You know, baboon is the most favorite food for the Hadzabi. Hadza climbing one of the biggest tree in Africa to retrieve a baboon that is stuck up in a branch. In some cases, when the Hadza hunt and kill a baboon in a tree, they may have developed various methods to retrieve the animal. Some possibility includes Climbing the tree Hadza individuals may climb the tree to retrieve the baboon. The Hadza are known for the agility and climbing skills. Hunt through the hunter-gatherer lifestyle. So climbing trees may be a feasible option for them. Using tools. The Hadza people traditionally using tools made from natural materials for various purposes, including hunting. They might use tools like ropes, vine, or even makeshift ladders to reach the baboon in a tree. Teamwork. Hadza hunter often work together in groups. They may collaborate to devise strategies for retrieving the baboon. 
such as using coordinating effort to climb the tree, share tools, or create a plan for bringing the animal down. After hunting and killing a baboon, the Hadza people typically carry the animal back to their camp or home. The process of carrying the baboon can involve several methods, depending on the size and the weight of the animals, as well as the distance to the camp. Here are some common approaches. Carrying on the shoulders. Hadza hunter may carry the baboon on their shoulders using a sling or some form of support to distribute to the weight. These methods allow for relatively efficient transportation of the animal. Sharing the load. In collaborative effort, if the baboon is particularly larger or heavy, multiple Hadza individuals may work together to care or drag the animal. This cooperative approach helps distribute the weight and make it more manageable. Dragging on the ground for shorter distance or when the baboon is too heavy to carry on the shoulders. The hunter might drag the animals on the ground. They may use a rope or a similar makeshift device to pull the baboon back to their camp.
Do the Hadza remove baboon skin after the kill? The Hadza people being traditional hunter-gatherers utilize various parts of the animal they hunt, including the skin. However, the specific practice may vary among different Hadza communities and individuals. It may cases hunter from various cultures, including the Hadza may use the animal skin for different purposes, such as clothing, shelter, or tools. If the Hadza decided to use the baboon skin, they might remove it after the kill. The skin can be valuable for crafting clothing, making pouches, or creating other items. The process of removing the skin typically involves cutting and peeling it away from the body. It is important to understand that uh, the use of animal parts, including the skin, is often based on practicality and resourcefulness in traditional societies. Animals are generally utilized to the fullest extent to ensure that uh, nothing goes to waste, and various parts are repurposed for different needs within the community. Thank you. 
Ah, c'est un peu.